all pet medications carry a small risk of side effects. But as a dog or cat owner, there are several steps that you can take to make them as safe as possible. And in this video, I'm going to give you nine steps to reduce the risk of side effects in your pet. Hi, I'm Dr. Alex from ourpetshealth.com, helping you and your pet to live a healthier, happier life. Now, if you've Googled your pet's medication, it may be that you've got some concerns about the potential for side effects in your pet. The first thing I'd say though is just don't panic. In the vast majority of cases, the drugs prescribed to your pet will be very safe and the horror stories that you might have read about will not be completely accurate. That said, every drug that does anything does carry the risk of causing side effects. Now, of course, we don't want to use any drugs irresponsibly, and there are a number of actions that we can take to minimize the risk of any side effects from developing in your pet. And my first step is to simply give only the medication advised by your vet. There is a lot of information online and it is easy for you to try and make your own diagnosis and treatment plan. You might even have some medication left over from another pet at home. There are two problems with this though. And the first is that your diagnosis might not be right. And so there is no benefit to your pet getting the medication. And the second is that there may very well be a good reason why that particular drug is safe for one dog or cat, but dangerous for another. They might need a different dose or they might have a condition that makes receiving that drug much more risky. If your pet is already taking medication, then adding another treatment to their plan may again make the risk of side effects much higher. So my next step is to never give your pet human medication unless specifically advised by your vet. Some human drugs are safe for us, but deadly for pet dogs or cats. Others can be given safely, but need to be given at very different dose rates to be effective and safe. And my next step to reduce the risk of medication side effects is very simple. Give your pet the correct dose at the right interval and for the right length of time as prescribed by your vet. Skipping doses and other administration errors can mean that a drug won't work. It might mean that a multi-resistant superbug infection develops in the case of antibiotics. It might even mean that a higher dose needs to be given and so the risk of side effects increases in the future. Simply follow the instructions given to you by your veterinarian. Now, my next step also involves following the instructions given to you with your pet's drug prescription. Do you need to administer with or without food? Does your pet need to have an empty stomach? Is it important that there is a gap between giving your pet two different medications? Okay, at five is to stop giving any medication straight away if your pet suddenly appears depressed, if they become unwell, stops eating or drinking, starts vomiting or having diarrhea, and these signs are not related to your pet's condition. If the medication is being given because your pet is unwell, then it may be that these problems are all part of your pet's illness. If though your pet is getting a medication for a skin infection, for example, Becoming lethargic and starting to vomit is highly unlikely to be linked, and so whatever medication you're giving should be stopped. Now linked to this at number six is to contact your veterinarian if you have any concerns with your pet's condition or any questions about the drugs that you're giving them. Even if you think you should continue with that treatment that's been prescribed, it is always better to check if things aren't going to plan or if your pet develops any new symptoms. So my seventh step to help reduce the risk of drug side effects in your dog or cat is to run any tests needed before starting and at intervals and advise, as advised by your vet. For quite a few drugs, it's a great idea to run a baseline blood sample at the very start of treatment. This not only helps to check that there's no underlying problems that may mean a different drug or an altered dose would be better for your pet, it also gives a great starting baseline value against which future tests can be compared. And this can give a true assessment of whether any drug is adversely affecting your pet and really that they need a change in their treatment plan. Very often when a dog or cat starts treatment, it'll be recommended that a blood test is carried out at more regular intervals. And then once they've been on that drug and been stable for some time, that interval will increase. Now, even if blood testing is not required, at number eight is to take your pet to be re-examined at the interval advised by your vet. With all the testing that can be done these days, it is important not to underestimate the benefit of your pet getting a proper physical exam. Based on an exam, as well as the history that you give your vet, it may be apparent that side effects are starting to develop or a treatment plan needs to be altered. It may even be that the drug has worked faster than expected and so treatment is no longer needed. Okay, my final step to reduce the risk of medication side effects in your pet is to follow any additional management instructions as advised by your veterinary team. These may allow a shorter course or a lower dose of medication to be used. 
Now, while a guarantee can never be given, following this nine step plan will help significantly reduce the risk of your pet dog or cat from suffering any serious drug side effects. Don't worry too much though, severe side effects really are uncommon. I remember that there will be a very good reason why you're giving them to your, your pet in the first place. If your pet is being given painkillers, then I actually have a dedicated cat and dog safety video that I'll link up here and in the description down below. Of course, if you have any questions about drug safety or how to keep your pet safe, then please leave me a comment down below and remember to subscribe so that you don't miss out on my future videos all about helping you and your pet live a healthier, happier life. For those of you with dogs or cats with arthritis, I've also got a free arthritis mini course. And again, I'll link that down below. I'd love it if you'd sign up and join me just to help keep your pet as comfortable as possible, which of course they deserve. So until next time, I'm Dr. Alex from Our Pets Health because they're family.